Welcome back to Store University Lesson 1, How to Value a Business. I'm Chris Folk, CEO of Store Capital. In the first three segments of this lesson, we discussed the importance of understanding the needs of the seller, how to calculate the cash flow of the company that you intend to purchase, and then determine how much you can borrow against the business you'd like to purchase. Now we're on to step four, which is how to value the cash flows that remain after using OPM or other people's money. And of course, the value of the cash flows that remain have to be paid for with YOM, Y-O-M, or your own money, otherwise known as equity. Now, naturally, you're probably thinking that you want to show up with as little YAM as possible. There are ways to accomplish this, and I will discuss this in the final chapter. But first, when you are thinking about the cash flow that you have the potential to receive after paying for OPM, it will look something like this. First, you start with EBITDA. Then you subtract the rents on the real estate that you might elect to lease as part of the transaction. Then you will subtract the debt service associated with any other borrowings that you plan to undertake, such as mortgage loans, term borrowings, asset based lines of credit financing, you name it. Now, subtract the amount that you expect to pay for normalized annual maintenance capital expenditures. And lastly, subtract the taxes that you might owe from the earnings of the business. And what's left over is free cash flow and it goes to you. Actually, this free cash flow isn't free. It will likely cost you something, which is the purpose of this fourth step in business valuation. How much YAM are you going to have to pay? For the purposes of keeping it simple to start with, let's just assume that the value of free cash flow can be easily estimated by looking to see what other investors might pay for a similar cash flow with similar growth and risk prospects. Maybe other investors would like to have a starting annual rate of return of 20% for such an investment. In that case, you would just take the cash flow and divide it by 20%, or which is the same thing as a five times cash flow multiple. And a 10% threshold would be something like a 10 times multiple. This is the most basic means of determining the valuation of the beginning free cash flow of the company that you want to purchase. Now, you can get more complicated. For example, you may have expansion plans or plans for operational improvements that have the potential to make the company much more valuable. As I stated earlier, your preference should be not to pay the seller for potential improvements that come from your work. But knowing the upside potential can allow you to sharpen your pencil to pay more for an acquisition if the need arises. Now here's the approach that I would take. You take a five-year projection of the free cash flow of the company and you incorporate your expansion assumptions and any operational improvements you think could be made to the business. This can be a very complex exercise because you have to adjust potentially many income statement variables and you may also have to make assumptions regarding investments in new locations or investments in new equipment that will change the debt service requirements. And if you need added financing, you probably can't get 100% financing, which means that you will require more YAM, or your own money, to grow. Now, YAM can come in the form of added cash that you contribute to the business, or the diversion of free cash flow from the business into your expansion plans. Since you're going to own the company, that free cash flow becomes YAM. It's your own money. Use the same five steps each year that you took for the initial computation of free cash flow and then use your spreadsheet software to compute the present value of each of the five years worth of free cash flow. Now, when taking a multi-year approach to business valuation, remember to also include a terminal value. That is, you take the final year of free cash flow and you divide it by your discount rate, and then also discount that value to the present. So this means that you're going to have five years worth of free cash flows discounted to the present, together with a terminal or ending business value that is also discounted to the present. If you're using annual free cash flows to make investments and expansion, there may not be much free cash flow left to value. However, those investments should bear fruit, which will be reflected in the higher terminal value at the end of the last model year. Here, it's really important that the final model year show the company that you've purchased and improved in a normalized business state with no assumptions for continued diversion of free cash flow into further expansion plans. And what discount rate should you use for this multi-year approach? I might suggest that the discount rate that you apply to the multi-year approach would be higher than for the single-year approach, since there may be higher risks of execution. Still, the result of this multi-year exercise will likely be to value the business higher, perhaps materially higher, than its current state. So what's the free cash flow of the business worth? I'd prefer to start with a simple approach of valuing the initial year of cash flow. 
But since you're purchasing a company that may have untapped expansion potential, you might also want to know the potential value of the company using the second multi-year approach. The value that you ascribe to the free cash flow of the business will be in the range between the two. Now you know the basics of how to value the corporate free cash flows. In our final lesson, we'll turn to the final steps of basic business valuation. Until then, I'm Chris Folk thanking you for joining me on this valuation journey.